All right, so let me take a few minutes and walk you through uh, the practice for this, some practice with the spreadsheets, particularly for the beam failure force calculation. Um, so how you format the spreadsheet is not really that important to me. I've given you an example, so copying this example would be great. Really the experience here is about using the um, uh, formulas and how, how to use those formulas to complete those calculations so you don't have to do it all by hand. Um, if you change your configuration, this would make it much easier to check and see what your uh, results are going to be. Alright, so the primary columns we're worried about are these three on the left hand side, A, B, and C. This is where, this is where our calculations are. The other ones I'll refer to as we go along. Um, so set your first three columns up like this. And for example, I'm going to go ahead and fill out the yellow columns. For me, those are data that we input. Um, our test length is, uh, we're using a 16 inch span, so we're going to enter that. Uh, average MOR is usually about 15,000. You'll use what's in, in your uh, data from this meeting. Uh, sometimes as high as 25,000 for the maximum modulus erupts or as low as 9,000 uh, occasionally. And then the sticks that I'm having to use as your base stick when you're assembling them is a quarter inch stick. And so, um, so you can put in the quarter inch, uh, of course it makes it a decimal. And so that's your input data. The other thing has to do with this stick C value, these values here. These are the center of mass uh, for each of the sticks in your sample. And so we'll use those, if we need to enter those here. So my sample uh, that we're showing over here is this one, two, three, four arrangement. Looks like a reverse L. And so we're gonna put in the C value. And again, this is entered data. Uh, you can do these in more complicated ways, but we're gonna, for stick number one, it's one eighth of an inch. And so, uh, we're going to put in one eighth of an inch, as you can see that's 0.125, but stick number two has the same one. Uh, stick number three is uh, three eighths of an inch. So let's go uh, up to 375. And stick number four is at five eighths of an inch, so 0.625. Alright, so if you had a different shape you put in and you had more sticks you put in their center of mass value. So again, one and two have the same center of mass three and four. Right. So uh, now the calculations are going to occur in the green cells here. And the first one we want to use is the average um, center of mass for all those sticks. That's one that's going to be uh, the primary thing. When we get the sample in class, we get this calculation first. So what we want to do is go ahead and use a formula to do this. We'll use the average formula that we used in the statistics um, requirements for uh, sample sample one, we want to average all of this data, even all the cells that were here. That way if we change our data, it will still work. And so we're going to use the cells from B13 down to B19 and figure out the average. It will ignore the blanks and give us the average. So if you remember from the sample in class, it was 5 sixteenths of an inch, which happens to be this 0.3125. All right, so that's the average C value. Now, I'm going to go over to the right here. This is the formula that we use to figure out um, the area moment of inertia for each stick. And remember, this is based on the area moment of inertia for the stick itself. And then a modification term, this is the parallel axis theorem, this modification term that is based on the position of the stick in the sample. And so C0 represents the sample center of mass and these individual Cs will represent the stick um, center of mass of where that stick is in the sample. So we're going to use this formula um, there will be some changes. B and H are the same for us. Our width and height are the same, so you will use the B to the fourth. Uh, B H here will use uh, uh, basically uh, the base to the square power. And so let's go ahead and put in this formula. Here's the actually the exact formula you'll want to use. The difference is here, I do have a uh, if-then statement used. And so if B13, and you'll notice B13 is the stick, if that cell is blank, then it puts a zero in for the I value. Um, you'll see there's some good reasons for that, but let's go ahead and uh, work this in. So we've got to use the equals command. Uh, if parentheses, we're going to select the B13 the cell right next to it, because for this stick, we're going to use that cell. Uh, if that equals zero, uh, then you put the comma in, then you use a zero. If it's not zero, the next comma tells you what you're going to do next. And this is where we start putting in our formula. You notice some of these have B, dollar sign B, dollar sign 10. So that's this cell right here. I'm going to click on that cell and use the F4 button. 
that locks it so whenever we copy anything, uh, we'll see the value of that here in a few minutes. So we're going to raise that to the fourth power. And we're also going to divide by 12 for this um, formula right here. So we have this value to the fourth divided by 12, and we're going to close those parentheses right there. And we're going to add, uh, moving on to the next piece, we're also going to take that same stick dimension, we're going to hit the F4 again to lock it in, we're going to square that value, and multiply by the product, uh, by the um, difference between the initial C value down here on B22, and we're going to and we're going to lock that one in place too, and we're going to subtract the C value for this stick. Close the parentheses, and uh, raise it to the second power, and that should take care of it. Oops, a uh, correction here. It doesn't look right, I'll have to check that. Uh, 4, 12, and this is square there. All right, so now I've corrected it looks right. You guys probably saw me mess that up, but let's try that. Yeah, that looks much better. Then I can also grab this corner and copy these cells down. Now, the only reason this works, and you see these decreasing values and then the zeros where there's nothing there, is that if command. If this is zero, then it puts a zero in here. All right, so that part is complete. All right, so for each eye, it calculates, or excuse me, for each stick, it calculates the eye. Now, let's come down here to the next section, which is from the total i. So the total i is just going to be the sum of this. And so we're going to sum these up and use the sum command, highlight these, close the parentheses, and there's your total i for your b. Now, this is where we start calculating failure force. Now, we rearranged this formula in class. We used the uh, modulus rupture, the i, and the c values. And so we have the c naught, we have I, that's a reflection of the change in shape, and then the length and the vector of force. So let's put in the failure force for the using the average modulus of rupture. So we're going to hit the equals, and then we're going to go uh, 4 times the average MOR times the I value, and then we're going to divide by uh, parentheses. L, the test length, times the C value. We'll close those parentheses. So that formula looks pretty good. So failure force, and we did this in class, 144.5 pounds, so that's familiar. Now what if our modulus of rupture is uh, at the maximum? So we can repeat that same formula uh, going down. Oops, escape out of that. I'm going to copy this cell down. Um, the difference is, I didn't double check the dollar sign values here. Let's um, do that one more time. Let's see what's fixed in place. We want to fix... Um, uh, we want to fix uh, B6 in place. So I'm going to click on that, hit F4, oops, F4. And the other one we need to fix in place is uh, B22. So we have F4 there. Uh, B23 should also stay fixed in place. So the only thing that changes is as we go down the minus of rupture, the failure force changes. So now if I copy it down, it should get good numbers. Uh, it should get good numbers. All right, so that takes care of it. So that will complete your calculations.